This trunk has been repainted before and despite that it's actually pretty flat and smooth. It's, it's pretty good. This spoiler which was just repainted as you can see has a lot of texture to it. So what we're going to do is sand that texture down until it is significantly flatter than it currently is and then polish it back out. Before you put sandpaper on your paint, it's very important to not only understand how to use the sandpaper, but to understand what you're putting the sandpaper on. In this scenario, I got the stuff repainted. I told the guy that I wanted to do all of the refinishing afterwards, meaning knocking down the orange peel and whatever imperfections might be in it and sanding it out. So I made sure that he put on a very good thick layer of clear coat meaning I have a lot of product to work with so that if I sand it I'm not going to remove so much clear coat that it would actually be dangerous to the panel and the clear coat might fail prematurely. On a factory panel you on average on a brand new car you have like 150 160 microns worth of paint typically about 50 60 of those are clear coat which means that if you get down to 110 microns worth of paint, you don't have too much clear coat left and it could be pretty detrimental if you put sandpaper on it. So you always want to use a paint depth gauge. However, what I'm going to be doing today is this rear spoiler and this rear bumper, which are both composite materials. They're not aluminum or steel. My paint depth gauge will not read on anything other than aluminum or steel. And in order to get one that will read on a surface such as this, it is very expensive. So the more that you know about it, the more you know about the rest of the car, like let's say this was a factory spoiler that I wanted to sand an imperfection out of. The car had never been repainted. I measure the paint in all the other areas of the car and get an idea of how much is on there. And by other areas, I mean the steel panels that I'm able to get a reading off of. And I can make an informed decision about how much paint is left on here. So the next question is what grit sandpaper do you want to start with? The rougher you start, the smoother it's going to finish out. However, the more product that you're going to be removing and the less longevity that you may have. Also, the more difficult the polishing process is. I'm going to hit all of these panels with some 2000 grit. It's going to significantly improve what it looks like. It's not going to get it 100% flat. I don't want it 100% flat because I want to leave a lot of clear on here for the years to come if this ever needs to be polished or sanded again. And I'm also able to remove 2000 grit sanding scratches without having to do a follow up step. There's products that advertise that they'll get out 1500 grit sanding scratches and I've used them all day long and planned different different ways to use them and different methods and they almost never work. So in my experience, unless you're using a rotary, 2000 is about as rough as you want to go with being able to polish it out relatively easily afterwards. The way that you sand the panel is extremely crucial to the finished product. So if I'm using 2000 grit sandpaper on here and I did a perfect job, it's going to polish out perfectly. There's not going to be any scratches left over from the sanding process at all. However, if I use that 2000 grit and I make a mistake with it and I dig into the paint using way too much force in an area, that 2000 grit scratch would be equivalent of a scratch of let's say 800 grit. So when you polish it out, yeah, you're going to remove all the 2000 grit scratches, but you're not going to remove that 800 grit scratch and there's going to be what's called strays or stray scratches that are going to be left around there. That's why it's so important that you make sure you do the sanding process correctly, which is what I'm about to take you through. So we're about to sand the spoiler from here to this tape line to give you guys a before and after. We're going to be wet sanding this, which a lot of people confuse for being a softer form of sanding. The water makes the sandpaper less abrasive, which is not the case at all. When you're working with a very low grit sandpaper, such as like 320, you don't really need to wet sand because the pieces of grit are so large that the paint has a hard time getting clogged into the sandpaper because as you're sanding, you are removing clear coat and that clear coat has no nowhere to go but into the sandpaper. When you wet sand, that water provides a medium for the actual clear coat getting clogged into the, into the sandpaper to be released. It'll run away, it'll clean the pad, it'll keep it clean the whole time. So ultimately, wet sanding makes the sandpaper more abrasive for a longer amount of time because it's not getting clogged. Another issue that happens when your sandpaper gets clogged is that it leaves little points sticking up that are very hard because it's clear coat and you'll scratch it very deeply and will not be able to remove those during the polishing process. So it's important to keep it clean and it's also important that with high grit you use it wet. 
The applicator is a huge part of the process. You wanna make sure that you have a proper sanding block. I'm gonna be using this side of the sanding block that has a little foam on it in order to help better contour to the edges and also to make these edges not as hard. So when you have your big piece of sandpaper, you wanna use the very beginning of it fold it up on the side so that whenever this doles out from you sanding, you can easily move it further and further down and use the whole strip of the sandpaper efficiently. Another thing you wanna make sure of is that you have it very tight from here to here. If there's a lot of slack in here, if you ever go side to side, the sandpaper is gonna pull like this and it's gonna cause deeper scratches. Because of that, you only really wanna go up and down. You don't wanna go side to side and drag the paper because you'll get those deeper scratches. So I'm just gonna go up and down in this motion, making sure it's pulled tight on both sides. And when you sand, you wanna use zero force whatsoever. You only want to have enough force on the paint for the sandpaper to be firmly grasped up against it. If you use any force additional to that, what's gonna happen is you're gonna cause those deeper scratches that can't be polished out. So you let the sandpaper do the work. It's not you doing the work, it's just allowing the friction of the sandpaper sliding against the paint to do the job that is at hand. I'm going in up and down motions. I'm being consistent, I'm working in a pattern, I know exactly where I have been and exactly where I haven't been, and I'm gonna continue working small sections at a time until I'm confident that it's sanded as much as I am comfortable with, and then move on to something else. You also, like I was saying, you need to make sure that you keep the sandpaper flat the whole time. Because of this little contour right here in the spoiler where it goes up, if I'm going up and down in this motion perpendicular to it, it's going to hit here, it's not really going to conform, and it's going to cause those deep scratches. So I'm actually going to go parallel with it and try to do my best to keep this 100% firmly planted the whole way around the entire time and to keep the sandpaper lubricated. I just have a bucket with some water in it that I'm rinsing off the sandpaper with in between. So I just did my first round of pretty thorough sanding and I'm getting to a stopping point where I'm assessing what I've done and deciding where to go from here. So when you look over near this tape line where I haven't sanded nearly as much, you can see how much of the orange peel is still there. Versus over here, it is significantly flatter. And that flatness is exactly what we're looking for. So up around these curved areas where it's not level, it's very hard to sand this flat. And the reason that I'm leaving a little bit of peel here is because I don't want to work this so much that I greatly increase the chance of getting deep stray scratches around here. So I'm just moderately taking care of those. I'm not going to this edge. If I was, I would be using something a little bit less abrasive such as 3000 grit. Because understand, if you have your sanding pad that's this big and you're sanding this edge with it, all the force that you would normally be displaying into a two inch by two inch area, you're now putting putting all that force on this tiny little area and it's going to be much more abrasive and take off a lot more material a lot more quickly and you're probably not going to be able to get those sanding scratches out. So when you do work an edge like this, you need to be super delicate, back off the pressure even more, slow down your arm speed and really just slowly take care of it. So. I'm gonna go back over this again because I know that I can kind of work some of these edges to get the peel out a little bit more and I'll take you along with the process and kind of let you know what's going through my head. So what I'm asking myself while I'm sanding is most importantly, is the pad flat? Am I putting pressure on the different portions of the sanding block in an even way that's allowing a uniform amount of pressure in every portion of the sandpaper making contact with the paint? If it's not, you're gonna get those deeper scratches that are not gonna be removed. And that's really only something that you're gonna be able to learn by feel from just doing it. You just have to get the experience to know when the pad is flat, when it isn't. And a, another way to really be able to tell what's going on is you wanna listen. While you're sanding, you'll hear the friction that's happening. If you get a piece of dirt or any kind of debris stuck in the paper, you will hear it dragging very loudly immediately and you need to stop immediately and clean it off in order to prevent from getting those stray scratches. Whenever you don't have even pressure on the pad, you'll hear the sound that the friction is making change because there's more friction and a smaller amount of area. 
So you really want to be in a quiet area where you can focus on the sound of what's going on to ensure that you're doing a proper job. Another thing to keep in mind is if the pad is worn out or not, because if it is too worn out, you're going to just be wasting your time because you're not actually going to be getting as much sanding done as you could be with the fresh side of the pad. Some people will do 10 seconds of sanding and then switch to a new side of the sandpaper and go through sandpaper like crazy. That's definitely the most efficient way to do things. However, I, I let it go for a good little bit until I really start noticing that I don't have much power left. I actually like it when the sandpaper dulls down because it takes a little bit more time, but I can do it safer. But obviously, if it's so dull that you're not getting anywhere, you're just wasting your time. So keep an eye on that as well. Make sure the water that you're putting onto the surface is clean. And another thing that you can do is while the surface is wet, it'll look glossy and that gloss is almost going to kind of replicate how it's going to look once it's polished out. So if you're looking at the water on there and you see imperfections in the paint that you have yet to remove, then that means that you could actually kind of get an idea of what it would look like polished out and you'll know this isn't going to look any better once it's polished. I need to work that area a little bit more. If you're going to be polishing it out, you most likely are going to be using an air compressor to blow out the pad. So I'm going to show you a trick real quick while I'm trying to dry this to get an idea. You can see that there's some areas that still look wet. You just hit them with the air and they're gone. So now you get a good idea of exactly what you're looking at. And what I'm looking for right now are areas where there's, it looks like it's not uniform and the scratches might be a lot deeper and I need to do the work now to try to remove those before I get to the polishing process. What else I'm looking for is what's left of the orange peel. I could chase this stuff down all day long with this 2000 and get it more and more perfect. I could jump up to a higher grit and I could get even more work done in less than amount of time and extend the polishing process. However, I am extremely happy with the results that I have right now. I haven't removed a whole lot of clear coat. The integrity of this is still going to be great and I think I'm getting pretty close to polishing. I'm just gonna sand up this edge a little bit more right here, which I wouldn't recommend doing because you get this tape in the sandpaper and then you can scuff up the surface pretty easily. But for the purposes of this video, we're gonna send it. So this is the sanded side right before I'm about to polish it out. As you can see, it's very flat. However, it still has some areas that could be worked more depending on how much clear coat you have and how much you want to leave behind. This is perfect in my opinion. So I'm going to polish this out and we'll take a look at how the difference is. In order to prep the pad for polishing, which I'm using a Rupes Mark III LHR21 and I'm also using a Rupes Medium Wool Polishing Pad. I absolutely love wool pads on a DA for getting rid of sanding scratches there's so much material that they can soak up the paint into as well as the compound that they'll last forever and do a really good job of dispersing the heat evenly i'm going to put a squirt or two of some o and r on there I'll blow it out with the air compressor This isn't too rough of a pad. This should be just about rough enough to be able to take care of these sanding scratches, not too hard. I'm gonna be using Meguiar's M110 Ultra Speed Compound. This is a variation of M105 that has some diminishing abrasives in it and it's a little bit softer on the paint and it should make the polishing process a lot less time consuming because it'll install less swirls. So because this is a fresh pad that has been cleaned and is about to be used again, I'm gonna put a lot of product on here and I'm gonna work it into every single one of these fibers because if you don't and you have these fibers rubbing onto the paint surface dry, they're gonna cause pretty deep little swirls slash scratches that the polish process might not be able to remove. So I'm gonna make sure that it is very, very thoroughly moved into the surface. And then I'm gonna put, there's a lot of product in this, so I'm just gonna put two little dots, we'll go for it. And when I start polishing, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna leave the pad circulating for about a second so that that polish can help spread around. The polishing process is gonna be the exact same as the sanding in a lot of ways in terms of keeping the pad flat, 
making sure that you're working all of the areas consistently. With When you're removing sanding scratches, I've always found that you have to use a lot of heat, which means very low arm speed, going very slow over it, and a good bit of force. I have to be very conscientious of this little curve right here and make sure not to burn this edge because the biggest difference with this polisher and the sandpaper is that this is removing the scratches as a result of the heat it creates versus the sandpaper is just purely the abrasion of how rough that surface is. It's not getting hot. It's just being able to just, it's just so rough that it's removing it versus this isn't that rough, but when it gets super hot and it gets the paint super hot, makes the paint very easy to come off. So you don't want to overdo it. You don't want to underdo it. I'm going to move very slow. I'm going to work this whole section all at once. You can see my arm speed, the way I'm doing this. I'm doing this on speed setting four on the machine. And if you guys have more questions and want me to go more in depth about using the polisher and this process of it, let me know. I'd love to make a video on it but I'm just mostly focusing on the actual orange peel removal aspect of this, assuming that you've probably used one of these in your life before. So I'm gonna start slow, spread the product in. Speed setting four. So in order to make sure that I'm not wasting my time, I'm using a brand new microfiber to remove this compound because I do not want a single piece of dirt to cause deep scratches in this after I just spent so much time sanding and polishing it. In my experience, whenever you use a DA to remove sanding scratches, you're pretty much never going to remove them 100% on the first pass. If you're real comfortable with a rotary and you love using a rotary, I would definitely recommend doing that to remove scratches in all scenarios for the most part. However, most people use DAs a lot more regularly, so that's what I'm showing you I'm using. I can still see that there's some areas where there's deeper scratches left behind, so I'm going to hit this one more time with the DA in order to get the rest of those out and then we'll take a look at it. This is a side that has not been sanded or polished out. And this is after the polishing process. There's no more sanding scratches that are left in there. There's still a light haze to this that you can see under the right lighting that I have to polish out. But I'm gonna continue working on to the overside to make it go from this. These are the final results of what the spoiler looks like as well as the rear bumper. I just threw in these inserts and I vinyl wrapped this section down here. And as you can see, that reflection is looking awesome. It isn't perfect. Like I said, I wanted to leave plenty of clear coat on there for the future, but just make it look blended in with all the rest of the panels, which is exactly what we did. If you guys have any questions, leave me a comment. I'll be more than happy to get back to you. Thank you so much for watching this, guys. Hope you watch my other videos and hit that subscribe button.